Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Today we are talking about murder most foul. In fact, a murder kind of ancillary to the court of Henry VIII and a woman who was hanged for it. Let's talk about Agnes Hungerford. If you are new here, a very special warm welcome to you. I am your host, Heather Tesco. I've been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This is the place where I put all my episodes from all of my various podcasts, as well as loads of extra content like this video right here. Quick reminder that TudorCon is coming up in, oh my gosh, a week and a day. What? And you totally want to get your streaming ticket so you don't have total FOMO all next weekend. Um, Englandcast.com slash TudorCon online to learn more about three days of Tudor immersion. It's going to be awesome. All right. In the heart of Somerset, amidst rolling hills and whispered legends, lies the ruins of Farley Hungerford Castle. It is a testament to the history of power, ambition, and mysterious events that unfolded within its walls. One of those events is the story of Lady Agnes Hungerford. Her birth and early life are shrouded in mystery, but her later years, marked by accusations and a trial and a tragic end, have echoed through the ages. Many of Agnes's contemporaries may have chosen to forget her, but the castle walls remember. Today, we are going to journey through time to talk about the story of a lady, two husbands, a mysterious death, and the haunting echoes that remain. So Agnes's life reads like the pages of a riveting historical drama. Her first husband was John Cotell, and he was the steward of Edward Hungerford. Edward Hungerford was a wealthy landowner. He actually would go to the Field of Cloth of Gold with Henry VIII in 1520. So he was a very wealthy landowner. John Cotell was his steward. And Agnes, she's also sometimes called Alice. Alice or Agnes was his wife. So on July 26, 1518, John's life came to an abrupt end within the walls of Farley Hungerford Castle. Not long after, Agnes married Edward. So this was a step up for her. She was first married to the steward. Now she's married to the boss. Edward had lost his first wife, Jane, a little bit before. So the exact timeline between John's death, John Cattell's death, and Agnes's subsequent wedding is a little sketchy, but definitely by the end of the year, by December 28th, Agnes and her servants had made Farley Castle, the Hungerford family's residence, their permanent home. So her husband dies July 26th. By the end of December, she's married and she is the lady of the manor. Agnes and Edward never had any children, but she was the stepmother to Edward's son, Walter, who was from his first marriage. Walter was about 15 when Agnes stepped into their lives. And the marriage seemed to be quite happy. Edward actually died in 1522, January 24th, 1522. But in his will, he left Agnes everything. He had just redone his will the year before, and he left her everything, made her the sole executor. And Walter wasn't named at all in the document, so he completely disinherited his son, according to the will. So then the peaceful facade crumbles, as always happens. And there are, you know, thoughts that Edward knew more about John Cattell's death than maybe he let on, and he had been protecting her. So suddenly these whispers that might have been going around before become louder. John Cattell's death wasn't natural. Stories emerge claiming that two yeomen of Hatesbury, William Matthew and William Ignis, who had worked for Agnes, had strangled John on Agnes's orders and then burned his body in the castle's furnace. The law caught up with them. Agnes, along with her servants, faced trial by November 1522, so it was only 10 months after Edward dies. The next year, Matthew and Agnes were sentenced to death for their roles in the murder, and they were executed at Tyburn in February of 1522. Agnes's final resting place was Greyfriars Church in London. 
William Ignis, on the other hand, initially escaped justice, but he was caught eventually and he was also executed. So it's a puzzle, right? Nobody knows exactly what happened in this situation, but the general consensus seems to be that Agnes might have orchestrated her first husband's death to pave her way to a more advantageous marriage with Edward. The peculiar disposal of her husband's body, coupled with the silence during Edward's lifetime, stirs suspicions of his own involvement. Oddly, because she was the sole inheritor and she then was killed, all of the property went to Henry VIII, went to the crown. But within a few months, most of the property was handed back to Walter, who, you know, by rights should have inherited it in the first place, except for Hatesbury. So given the fact that Walter had been completely left out of his father's will, it's tempting to think that he might have had something to do with making this whole thing public and um, you know, bringing everything to light in the first place. Even centuries after the tumultuous events of her life, Farley Castle holds whispers of Agnes's spirit. Numerous visitors and locals have told stories of encountering a spectral presence believed to be Agnes, especially around twilight when the boundaries between day and night blur. Within the cold stone walls and echoing halls of the castle, many have reported a feeling of being observed or of a sudden chill in areas that are otherwise warm. A particular favorite haunt for this ghostly figure seems to be the vicinity of the chapel. Eyewitnesses speak of a fleeting vision of a woman, ethereal in beauty, who appears just for a moment before fading away into the encroaching shadows. Moreover, some accounts have described distant sounds reminiscent of a woman's lament echoing through the castle's corridors, particularly on stormy nights. Others have even claimed to catch the scent of a burnt aroma, eerily reminiscent of the tragic event that transpired in the kitchen furnace. The tales of Agnes's apparition serve as a haunting reminder of her tumultuous past and the castle's grim history. While many may dismiss these stories as mere lore, others believe that Agnes, Lady Hungerford, is still bound to Farley Castle, searching for solace or perhaps seeking to tell her side of the story. Maybe there was more to it. Maybe she was actually one of the victims in all of this. I don't know. If you are ever brave enough to visit, please let me know if you see her ghost. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have made it to the end and enjoyed it, I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I put out videos like this almost every day. I appreciate you watching. You are deeply loved and appreciated. I'm so glad I share the planet with you. Don't forget to drink your water and stay hydrated and I will see you in the next video.